is wild gunman. In the 1980s, when I got my NES, I picked up the NES action set, and it came with a zapper light gun and the Mario Brothers Duck Hunt combo game. And I loved the light gun. And although the zapper games were far and few between, it was still amazing to me, and it worked really good. Nintendo brought its arcade gun games like Wild Gunman and Duck Hunt, you know, back to the home console, and they usually lived up to the arcade versions. By the 1990s though, gun games continued to make their presence known at home, and even more so in the arcades. I mean, I poured weekly savings into my local arcade, playing classic titles like Aliens and Terminator 2. So I've got the latest Raspberry Pi 4, and I want to be able to play these games with two people. I mean, because blowing aliens away by yourself just doesn't cut it. So let's talk about how to set up two player send in light guns for your Raspberry Pi. Like and subscribe, and hit the bell so you know when we go live. So I use the Belena software to image my SD card, but you can use whatever you want. I'll put the link in the description for that software. I'm also going to put the link to the Bare Bones version 7 image from Harry Dog. This image will save you a lot of work and it has a lot of the emulators pre-configured ready to go out of the box. Now a lot of folks have asked if you can simply add the Send and Light Gun software to your own image. And while we won't be covering that in this video, the short answer is yes, but there's a lot of legwork to be done afterwards. Once you have the Barebone 7 image downloaded and extracted, you can start up your Belena software. And what it's going to do is ask you to select the image and go ahead and navigate to it. And when you select it, it'll ask you where you want to flash the you know image to. We're going to flash it to the SD card and go ahead and say OK and start the flash. This will take a minute, but once it's done, go ahead and put it in your Pi. All right, next you're gonna connect up to your gamepad and ethernet cable, unless you're using wireless, and go ahead and power it up. One thing to note, when you're connecting your HDMI, make sure it's connected to the port closest to the power outlet, labeled HDMI 0. Once emulation station is up, you'll see the screen that detects your gamepad. Go ahead and go through and set this up, you know, however you like. It's pretty straightforward, just follow the instructions. First thing we need to do is go into RetroPie and select Raspi Config. What we need to do is expand the file system because the image is only 8 gigs. And I'm assuming you have a pretty big SD card. Mine's uh, 128, but whatever size it is, you want to use all of it. So go ahead and expand the file system and we'll reboot. Alright, next we want to get your ROMs on there. So go ahead and launch WinSCP. Once that comes up, what you're going to do is log in with your IP, which you can get from the RetroPy menu, and go ahead and type in Pi as your username and log in. The folders are laid out so that you can upload your ROMs to whatever system it is that you're trying to play. For Arcade, just put them all in Arcade. For PlayStation, put them all in PSX. So all you got to do is just drag them from the left side to the right. What I'm going to do is go ahead and upload Alien 3, Lethal Enforcers, and Terminator 2, and a couple other... Uh, PlayStation games like Point Blank. We'll go ahead and do Duck Hunt and a couple NES games as well. Go ahead and plug in your send in light guns at this time and we'll go ahead and reboot as well. All right, before we start plugging up the send in light guns, there's a couple things that you need to check. When you get the boxes, inspect to make sure that both the camera IDs are different. If they're the same, it's gonna be a little tricky and I'd recommend talking to the guys on Discord to give you some help. But make sure that they're different so that the two players is gonna be a lot easier to set up. All right, next we wanna to go to ports so that we can calibrate the guns. Once you're in the ports, go ahead and do a send in light gun test player one and point the gun at the screen and you'll be able to tell if the mouse is centered underneath your sights. If it's not, then you'll have to go and calibrate it. If you have versions 1.5 firmware or later, you'll be able to calibrate it just using the instructions on the screen. If you have 1.4 or earlier, you'll have to manually calibrate it by editing the light gun exe config file. 
and you have to do that manually. Something else to be mindful of is if you're in the screen and the mouse is jittering like crazy or it's barely even showing up, you might not have the brightness turned up. It, you know, the gun may not be able to see the borders. So turn the brightness up in your TV uh, or maybe the lights in the room are just too powerful and it's just overshadowing the TV and it's hard to detect. So something to be aware of. One thing to note, when you do these tests, you're actually going to turn the send in light gun off after the test is over. So what you need to do is make sure that you're back in ports and that you start up player one and player two light guns after you've done the test. Otherwise, what will happen is you'll start up ROM and you'll wonder why the guns aren't working and that's because they haven't been started. So make sure that you start them up after any calibration tests. Something else to note when you're starting up player two, it's very unique. Starting up player one, you can choose single shot, auto shot, you know, recoil, non-recoil, doesn't matter. When you're starting up player two, you can also do the same thing, but the exception is there's an arcade option. Select arcade, obviously when you're playing arcade, like Aliens 3 or Terminator 2, games like that. If you're playing a Nintendo game or PlayStation game or some other console game, just choose the regular start, you know, start player two options for recoil, non-recoil, auto, single, whatever it is that you prefer. But just something to be aware of, that's the only difference for player two. All right, so you started up player one and you started up player two arcade. Let's go ahead and see if we can get aliens working. First thing you want to do is select your hotkey and X button. And what that'll do is bring up the retro arc menu. And from here, there are a couple things that we want to check. So in the menu, go ahead and go down to settings and input. Scroll down to port two bind. And what we want to make sure is that the mouse index is set for two. If you're still having issues with one of the guns, I would recommend checking the border. Go ahead and go back into the RetroArch menu and go down to on-screen overlays and scroll down to overlay presets. And in here, you'll be able to see all the different send-in borders. Personally, I use send-in border white medium, but you can pick which one works best for you. If your gun is having difficulty detecting the border, then you're going to have a lot of issues and this will help solve that. So test each one if you're having issues to find out which one works best for your TV and setup. Lastly, this should already be set, but you can also go into quick menu options and make sure that the enable mouse is turned on. In the bare bones image, most of these will already be taken care of, but it doesn't hurt to go ahead and double check to make sure that you're good to go. Once you figure out what works for you, go ahead and go down to the quick menu overrides. Here you can save that for this particular game or for the entire core, which will apply to all games. One thing to note, if you're going from arcade to console or console to arcade, you're going to have to stop the send in light guns and then start them back up because remember arcade has a special startup script. So make sure you do that before going into PlayStation from arcade, for example. When you load up a PlayStation game, go ahead and go into the input under the main menu and go down to port two binds. And we're going to make sure that the mouse index is set to two here as well. And one more thing to check, go into quick menu, options, and what you want to check is make sure both pad one type and pad two type are selected to gun con. And that's it. Well, I'll tell you what, having light guns back in my repertoire of gaming has been a lot of fun, but I couldn't have done this without some help. And I want to give a shout out to Titch Gamer and Harry Dog for the image and all his help, as well as the man himself, Andy, Mr. Light Gun. Couldn't have done it without you guys. So hopefully this video has helped you and given you a couple ideas on things to troubleshoot, things to look for. But as always, if you still run into issues, you know, hit the guys up on Discord and hopefully they can get you up and running. Until next time, see ya.